Okay, Stanley, I have you on. I guess, uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Very good. We only expect two more people today. Okay. Terry Ann and Joe. Okay. I'm Stanley. Yes, I got you, Stanley. Rodak. Yes. Yes, thank you for signing up and giving me all the information I need. Thank you. Yes, I get um, some attachments that have some strange endings. So I said, why not learn? <laughs> That's a good attitude. Yeah. Why not learn? Uh, and also, don't tell my know. wife that. She'll use that phrase to me all the time. Why don't you learn something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have been to school most of my working life, so good. I enjoy learning. I what think is you know, your background? My background? Well, let's see. I guess uh, I ended my career with AT&T. Well, technically it was Lucent Technologies. I don't know if you remember that. They got bought out by Nokia. But anyway, I ended my career as a quality auditor. And I would go to organizations and audit them on quality, look at their quality manual, their quality standards, and how they improve their process. That's it was interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It was <clears throat> Are you an engineer? By background yeah. or yeah. mechanical, electrical, or? Uh, neither one, a uh, computer. I was a, a computer programmer for a very short amount of time. But I use computers a lot. Okay. I'm a physicist by my degrees. And Wonderful. when I was working towards a doctorate, which I, decided to bow out of. I was into computer science and microelectronic engineering and stuff like that. Wow. What year was that that you were exposed to that? What year? Pardon? What year were you uh, into that educational part of microelectronics and that kind of education? What year was that? Uh, let's see. Wow. About 1985 at George Washington University. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't mean I know computers or electronic engineering. It's like asking a mechanical engineer to repair a car. No. I've known mechanical engineers who wouldn't go near a car <laughs> to repair it. <laughs> so... It's just, I understand the yes. guts, the theory, so. Yeah. Well, very good. Did you work for some comp interesting companies? Um, well, <clears throat> federal government is where I retired from. Uh, the middle third, I was into um, infrared systems as they were being brought online for the military. So I was right in the midst of it. And then my last 10 years, I was with the FBI. Oh, wow, very good. As a scientist, engineer, uh, sort of a person of all, uh -huh. all skills which allow me to travel quite a bit in Europe, somewhere in Asia, and then around the US, a troubleshooter. Uh -huh. Sort of like you, you were a troubleshooter in your domain. Sort of, yeah, that's true. So. It was fun. Yeah. I retired in 1995. Okay. So, and I've been equally active since then. Good. What keeps you busy now besides dabbling with the computer club? 
<clears throat> like this morning, I came back from fly fishing in Lakewood Ranch. Uh, day trips up to Tarpon Springs or down to Naples or over the East Coast just to visit friends or I might say I want a, a true Greek restaurant, so I go up to Tarpon Springs and see yeah. sort of, <laughs> or visit the museums or, or even travel Alaska and other. So, and well, that's, I could ask you the same question on a daily basis. There's always something on my Yes, list. yes. So. Oh, yeah. Especially if you have a house. Yes. You have a house, I presume. Yes. And we just finished an extensive renovation. We put new floors all over the house, except for the carpeted bedrooms. And we redid the whole kitchen and had the whole house painted indoors, this what they call agreeable gray, which is similar to the wall color you have, I think, behind you. Yeah. And uh, it looks like you might have a, a oriental carpet on your floor. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not an expensive one, it, but yes, I do have one. I'll move on away if you can see it a little bit. Okay. Uh, where did you get it? Just curious. I don't know. Probably Costco. Okay. Yeah. I just bought one with a similar perimeter from a. Uh, the women's exchange. Oh, uh, they have a, a nice selection, and it is handmade. I uh, checked out uh, on the internet how you test it. It's handmade, very cheap. Eight by ten was about seven hundred and forty dollars. Okay, I don't think this was anywhere close to that, but. Okay. It uh, uh, it serves this purpose of uh, it, it does very well and I like the way it looks and it's one of those things that if you don't like it after a few years or it wears out because the quality isn't up, up to standard then we would just get another one. We didn't purposely buy it as a lifetime investment or anything like that. It's, okay, I, I didn't either, but it it looks very beautiful in it. It enhances the room very much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it adds color and uh, it sits on the floor very much. The red, it looks very beautiful. Oh, thank you, yeah. I don't know if you have many hobbies, but as I get older, I don't like running in the car and driving around to do things. I like doing some things at home and uh, there's this painting up there. You could see it. Yeah. I can get close to it. That is a paint by number. And it was by a Russian, the original was by a Russian artist that immigrated to the United States and ended up in Florida. And I didn't know him at all. I just picked the painting because I liked it. But it's very bright and it's very, um, easy to do. You don't have to blend colors together like a real artist. And yet it still looked fairly nice because his paintings were blotchy to begin with. His originals okay. were blotches of color. And so I did that painting. I liked it so much. I did two more. And uh, interesting. yeah, you just get them, you know, you order them online through uh, Amazon and they're not expensive. And it turns out real nice and I enjoy doing that. So I just throw that out for you as a possibility if you find a, want a little something that doesn't involve yeah. a lot of traveling. You know. uh, is there a, a name that you would search for? No, I would, I would just search for adult paint by numbers. Okay. And in fact, since you asked that question, there's another painting I did. I'll show the camera over here for you real quick. Uh, see that one there, that's my house. 
what I did is I sent them a photograph and then they sent uh, a paint by number of my photograph. Wow. And that was interesting. You could check out those online. Now this one took about three months for me to receive it because it was ordered from China, basically. Do they send you the paints too? Or? Oh yeah, they send you the paints. They send you a printed uh, color guide that's on paper. So you, if you don't see the numbers very easily on the canvas, you yeah. can refer to the paper and say, oh, that's number seven. And then I would always uh, try to get it already framed, the canvas in a stock frame, you know, the, the yeah. wood frame underneath the canvas. Yeah, that's usually better because then you don't have to stretch it and tack it yourself. That's interesting. Yeah. Might I ask how much it costs? Not very much. I think it was uh, the one behind me, I think it was around $20. Oh, that's and tough. the one with the, the photograph, that was a little more. That was probably 30 because they took my photograph and they run it through a computer basically that sorts out the colors and come up with the color palette. So it's it's not so it's something that if you're interested in and you want to try it, uh, you're not out hardly anything to give it a try, you know. I, I figure that's uh, that costs less than you and your wife going to the movies. Oh yes. Yeah. And, and you have several weeks of, of entertainment. Yeah, I did it uh, about an hour a day, and I think it took about two weeks, maybe three weeks. So that's uh, you know, maybe 20 hours total. Very nice. Now, how will you know if somebody's trying to join? Um, I, get a, I get a notice up here that somebody trying to join, and it is, we are after time, aren't we? Here's the participants, it's just you and I, and I don't see any, any, uh, Thing on here is starting to join. So I, I set my iPhone alarm each day for different things that are happening because you get busy. Uh, if you want to take a moment and ping on the others and say, where are you? Yes, let me, Joe Dietz gave me his phone number. Let me call him. Yeah. My, my biggest fear is that um, you know, you obviously had the right link. My fear is that it's not their fault. It's uh, for some reason they have the wrong link or I gave them the wrong link. So I don't know. Let me call Joe and we'll see if he's yeah. handy. Thank I you for your patience. He gave me and I just clicked on it. Good. Also, be a cockpit error where they're making mistakes. <clears throat> Hi, is this Joe Dietz? Hi, Joe, this is Jim Cerny, your instructor for the class this afternoon. And I didn't see you trying to log in. So is there a problem or you just uh, have some, something else came up for you today? Okay, all right. Uh, just one so far, and another person didn't sign in, so I, I don't know if I contact them or not, but that's fine. I hope the AC gets repaired. I went through that myself, so good luck to you. Okay, thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Air conditioning? Yeah, he had his air conditioning guy is there right now, so he's got a good excuse. Uh, Terry Ann Bajorek was the other one. I do not have a phone number for her. 
Um, many people register to me and don't give me their phone number. And I usually like to have it for instances like this when I can't, uh, I don't know if the person's trying to get on or not, but I think we better get going anyway. And I'll give you every penny you paid for the class back if you don't like it. All right. Double or nothing. Double or nothing, no problem. Okay, maybe she'll try to join later, but uh, you can hear me okay? We're all good to go? Oh, your voice is coming in excellent. Okay, it's just this little thing, believe it or not. This is my microphone, is this little thing right here. Okay. On my, I'm surprised it works as well as it does, but okay, let me uh, uh, reduce this down a little bit and I'll go to screen share. And so you'll see my, my desktop screen. And you don't have to mute um, at all if you don't want to stand, just leave yourself on. Uh, you don't have any barking dogs and, and nobody's going to throw a rock through your window, so we should be fine. Oh, but if somebody breaks in, I'll uh... <laughs> okay, okay. Go for it. All right, here we go. Let me uh, share screen. Okay, can you see my screen okay? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a okay. water spouting. Yes, it is. I'm going to reduce this down here. Here we go. Yeah, we have a water fountain at the top of my screen. You probably can't see it. I have all the, the commands for the Zoom call. And yes. I have uh, the two of us in Windows on the far right. And then there's the fountain and my desktop icon. So you can see my desktop okay, correct? Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to start, uh, let me give you a, a two minute introduction to file types. And the reason that they exist is because if you wrote an app or a program that allowed people that use your app or program to create a file, like as if you wrote a word processing program, and people used your, your word processing app to create a document. Obviously, you'd want them to be able to save that document so they could, they could uh, open it up later, make changes to it, save it again, make copies, whatever they want with it. So many apps or applications allow the user of the app to save a file. If you have a camera and you're taking pictures or you take a picture on your iPhone, you're creating a file with each picture you take. And the files are stored on your iPhone until you decide what you want to do with them. You want to send them to Google Online Photos. You want to save them on your computer, whatever you want. But that file is a photo and that file needs to be identified in the file name, what type of file that is. And that gives you a clue as to what app created the file. So now I'm going to open up File Explorer on my Windows. You can see it at the bottom there, File Explorer. Have you used File Explorer, by the way? Uh, no. Okay. File Explorer is very important to Windows, and I teach a great class on File Explorer. And I'm going to open it now. The, the app icon looks like a little Manila folder. Yes. And if I click on it, I open up the File Explorer. Let me see if I can uh, expand it here a little bit. There we go. I'm going to make it a little different size on your screen so I can see it better on my screen. There we go. Would it be possible to get a set of these overheads? I'm sorry, say that again. <clears throat> Would I be able to get a set of these overheads or I'll just take pictures of them? Yep. Yeah. Like this slide. 
You mean this this window? Yeah. I'll so file it. I'll just take pictures of what I see. Okay, if you wish. You have your own file explorer app as well. If you go down to your start button and you open up your start button, you get a list of all your apps here. Okay. Now file explorer is up here because it's in my most used area. Okay. okay. The list really starts here. And if you go down the list, all the way to W for Windows. Gotcha. And I, I think it's Windows Accessories. Let me ch check that folder, see what's in there. There's the Paint Program. But File Explorer is not in there, so it's not in the Windows Accessories. Let's try Windows Administrative Tools. It's not in that one either. Um, Windows System, let's see if it's in that one. Windows gives you so much stuff. Yes, there it is. Okay. Under Windows System, there's File Explorer. And if you want to put that icon on your desktop, you just put your mouse on it like I have here. You hold down the left mouse button and you drag it to your desktop and let up your mouse and you will have made a link on your desktop. Where is it? I'm looking for it, it has to be there somewhere. See, I have mine on my on my shortcut bar at the bottom. Yes. So I think if I brought it up here, I could uh, put it to the desktop. I won't do that. But File oh. Explorer should be here somewhere. Photos, start class window. I wonder if it's in the upper right up here. No. It's probably behind a window where I don't see it. I, I got the gist of it. Okay, good. Oh, here it is. Way over here. Yeah. Yeah, that's where. So then you would drag it to a, the part of your screen where you want to keep it, like there. And that's File Explorer. Okay, let me get out of this all together here and we'll, we'll start this again here. All right. So File Explorer. If I open that app, click, click, it comes with Windows. Everybody has Windows, has File Explorer. And File Explorer allows you to find and work with all the files on your computer, whether they're on your C drive or they're on a drive that's plugged into your computer, connected to your computer. And here, for example, if I go to documents, these are all the my documents files uh, that I have. If I go to pictures, these are all my photos files. If I click a folder, double click a folder, click, click. These are all my photos. Okay, so to illustrate what a file name is, I'm going to go to documents. And let me sort this by name, okay? When you use File Explorer and you go to a folder, it lists the contents of the folder you click on over here. It lists the contents over here. So if I click on music, I get the contents of my music folder over here. I don't have music on my computer. If I click on pictures, I get the contents of all my pictures, including any folders that are in the pictures folder. Right. So I'm going back to documents again, and the folders are listed first. Here's my current documents. Click, click, and I only have a few things in there. And the list is up here as to the location of where I am at 
looking at these files. Here's the documents folder. And if I double click on, uh, where is Stug folder here, Stug folder. And in the Stug folder, I have a folder called monitor articles. Double click that, click, click. And you can see up here, this is my location. I'm on my PC, on the C drive. I'm in the documents folder. And in the documents folder, I'm in the Stug folder. And in the Stug folder, I'm in the monitor articles folder. And right. here are all the monocle, monitor articles I've written. Okay, anyway, that's a quick lesson on File Explorer. And if I click the arrows here, I can see there's documents and here's Stug folder, click the arrow. And there's the class, there's the monitor articles and that's the contents over here, monitor, monitor articles. Okay, I'm gonna close these up. We're gonna go back to documents and Let's scroll down a bit to look at some, a listing of files. These are files, these are not folders. The folders will tell you it's a file folder right over here under the type. Here we have a list of various different kinds of files that are on my computer. And you can see that the file extension is displayed. If you don't have the file extension displayed in the list, just put your cursor on the file name and it will show you the file type in the box that appears. The file type is the extension. The extension to the file name identifies the file type. So this file, uh, neighbor's party table, that is a document because it ends with dot doc. So it's a Microsoft Word document and it's an old one. I made it back in 2017. That's when it was created. But the dot doc is the file extension that identifies this file. Now, if I can lower this down a second here, here we go. And I go to view. This is a uh, file explorer now, and I go to view and right here is the file name extensions and I have mine checked. And because that is checked, I can see the file extensions here. If I uncheck it, those file extensions are not displayed here, but it doesn't matter because the file type is listed here anyway, and you can put your mouse on it and it tells you that it is a Microsoft Publisher file type, file type. But I like to have mine checked so that I get the file extensions listed right with the file names. I like that. You'll also notice the little icon at the beginning of each file name is a symbol of the file type. So that this is a .docx, a Word document. In other words, this document was created by the Word, Microsoft Word app. It has a little tiny document with a W in it to identify it. And if I come down here, up here, this is a PDF file type. And if I come down here to this one, .pub, that's a Microsoft Publisher file type. Now let's see if I have any photos in here. I don't think I do. So let me go to the photos and pictures. I use the term pictures and photos interchangeably. I probably shouldn't. But these, most of all my photos are JPEG file types, JPG files, JPEG file type, dot JPG. And it's a photo. If I double click on it, click, click, it will open it up in the 
Microsoft Photo Viewer program. And there's a photo of my credit cards. Don't memorize them, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's good okay. to know what the problem is. Yeah. Uh, so that's what a, the first purpose of a file type is to identify the app or program that created the file. Okay. Then sure. you start running into problems. The, let's take a simple example. Suppose you do not have the Microsoft Word app on your computer, but somebody else does. And somebody sends you an email and attaches a Microsoft Word document to the email. And you open the email and you see the attachment at the bottom of the email and you can tell right away that it's a Microsoft Word document. It should identify itself clearly with the file type in that attached file. Now, if you try to open that, you're not going to be able to open it because you do not have Microsoft Word installed on your computer. In other words, to open that file, you would have to have the Microsoft Word app installed on your computer. So you can't open it. Well, what do you do? Well, one thing you can do, and I recommend this, is to call the person up or send them an email back and say, I'm sorry, I can't open your attachment. I don't have Microsoft Word. Can you send it to me as a different file type? And I'll show you how people can do that, okay? The second thing you can do that I don't usually recommend is if you try to open a file that you do not have the app for, you will get sometimes, many times, you'll get a window on your screen that will say, how do you want to open this file? Do you want me to use a WordPad? Do you want me to use XYZ app? Do you want me to use this app? And if you do not know those apps that are listed for you, I would not recommend that you download the app and try to use it. The reason is there are many apps that can open Microsoft Word files, not just Microsoft Word. And these other apps, the companies that create them, they want your business. So they will propose use this app to open and look at that file. And I would not download any apps to do that without talking to somebody at the computer club and say, look, I got this file from somebody I can't open and it's suggesting I use app ABC to open that file. Do you use app ABC? Is that a safe app to use to open these files? Should I download that app and use it to open these files? And you get the answers to that. How trustworthy is that app? And you can look up that app on Google and say, uh, tell me about this app and what files can it open? Okay. Do you have any questions about that so far? Uh, no. Good, okay, we'll keep going. I, I see what you discussed, and I've been cautious because Good. you don't know what you're going to get into your computer. Right. Yeah, I would not download a new app, any app. I would not download any new app without it being recommended by there somebody one, you trust. What one that I don't have, if I get a compressed file, I think they call it zip files. Yes. I think that is safe. It's a, the zip, when you get a zip file, that means that that file has been compressed. People compress files for different reasons. In the yeah. old days, people would compress files to save space because computer memory space was expensive. It's not anymore. I don't use compressed files. But if you get to a zip file downloaded to you as an attachment and you need to unzip it, 
I would still talk to somebody at the computer club that works with zip files. I do not. Okay. Uh, Bill Crow or uh, Huey um, would be good guys to talk to about zip files, I think, or Dave Gerber. Uh, they probably have knowledge and experience with zip files. I do not. If you, I remember I mentioned the icons next to the name. Yeah. If you see a, a file, it should tell you as a file type that it's a zip file. And the logo should be something that looks like a zipper, believe it or not. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let me throw out a little caution about zip files. Because the file is compressed, Zip can compress any file, whether it's a photograph, a Word document, or whatever. If you run it through the compression app, the Zip app to compress the file, it will compress it. But when you receive it, you won't know what file type it is until you unzip it because it's been compressed. All yeah. you would, so you, you run the unzip app to open or unzip the file, then you will see what file type it is. And you still may not have an app that can open that file type, but at least it won't be zipped anymore. It'll be the full regular size. Gotcha. Okay, good. Um, let's take the another example. Do you work with photos a lot on your computer or your iPhone? Uh, on the iPhone and occasionally on the computer. Okay. This is an, another example that I think is very helpful. Almost all photos today are in JPEG format. Okay, dot JPG. Right. That means it's a photo. If I am using File Explorer and I have a list displayed of photos here and I can uh, change the view on my list. I can change the view to large icons. And then I can actually see a thumbnail of the photo that is the file. Gotcha. And you can see that they're all JPEGs. Okay. Now, yeah. if, oh, here's that painting that's on my wall. I'll, I'll open that just because I see it here. I'm, you know, it'd be kind of fun. So if I want to open this file and I'm in File Explorer, I simply double click the file name and it will try to open that file. So here I go, click, click. And it opens that file and it opens it in wow. Microsoft Word, I'm sorry, not Microsoft Word, it, it, Picture Viewer or something like that. What is the... Uh, Photo Viewer, I believe it's Microsoft Photo Viewer. It comes with Windows, so everybody has it. Yeah, let's see if I can uh, it's zoom in on this. Yeah. yeah, it's it has a charm about it, you know, the colors are bright, but you can see how easy it would be due to paint by numbers. But I like the color and I just like it, so it's just me. Um, Okay, let's, uh, so if I, I'm going to remove the photo now from view, it's still here in my pictures folder. So if I double click a file name in Microsoft File Explorer, the computer will use a default program to open that photo. So if I double click Turtle Rock here, click, click, it's going to use the default program to open it, which is Photo Viewer. I did not open Photo Viewer. It opened by Windows because that was the default program on my computer, the default okay. program for viewing photos. Okay. Now suppose, I'm just going to lower this down to a down here, put it down here, File Explorer. Suppose I want to open a file in a different app. I would first open the app, like the Paint program. Double click the Paint program. That comes free with Windows. Everybody has the Paint program. Click, click. 
it opens up paint to an empty view because I, there's no program, there's no file that I opened yet. So I go to file and I go to open. And let's see, here's, here's what I get. And I want to open this file in the paint program. Okay. And let's see, should, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have had that open. I apologize. Let me exit, here it is here. I opened up the, here it is. This is the open for the paint program. Let me start that over so that we don't get confused. I opened up the paint. There's no painting or picture here because I have not opened up a file. I go to file and I click open and I get the open window with the paint icon. So I know that this is the window to open up something in the paint program. It looks just like File Explorer. That could be a little confusing. Here's, here's my, my pictures. And I think it was in pictures. Oh, let me open up pictures again here. Was it? Uh, I'm trying to find that same, there we go. There it is. And now I click the file I want to highlight the file. And then I click open. And now that file is open in the paint program. And I will prove it to you. There it is. Wow. Let me go back down here to shrink the size of it a bit. Okay, so now I can work with that photo in the paint program. I can play with it, I can put text on it, I can do anything I want. What's the point of this? The point is for pictures, as an example, a JPEG file type can be opened by many different apps. It can be opened by the paint app, it can be opened by the Windows photo viewer app. It can be opened by Adobe Photoshop. It can be opened by probably a thousand different apps or more can open a JPEG file type. Okay. So I also illustrated accidentally on purpose, the default app for opening a file type. Okay. I won't go into it unless you have questions at the end of the hour, but for different file types, you can assign an app that you have on your computer to be the default app when opening that file. Okay, so here's an example of that in Microsoft Word, for example. Okay. When I installed Microsoft Word on my computer, <coughs> the computer didn't come with Microsoft Word. It came with Windows. And with Windows, there is a program, an app that can do text. And it's called, uh, let me find it again here. It's called, in fact, I think I have it on my desktop. I think I should have it on my desktop here. Uh, there's the Microsoft Word program. I think it's called WordPad. And I thought I had it on my, let me see. Oh yes, here it is, WordPad. All right. So we're gonna <laughs> get, we're gonna get a, a really cool here in a second. If I open up WordPad, click, click, this comes free with Windows, okay? I can create a document, type a letter, whatever I want, and I can do a file and I can do save. And these are the different file types I can choose to save this document. I could save it as a plain text document. 
I can save it as a rich text document. Okay, all these documents, there's five different ones. Each one, well, this one's other formats. That means other file types. There's four file types that I have an option to use if I save a file using WordPad, okay? None of these file types are Microsoft Word formats. So if I save that as a rich text document, okay, it's gonna save it as a file type dot RTF, that stands for rich text format. And I can do that. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to save them. I'm not going to save it at all. But the point there is an app may have options for you to save in different file types. Let me show you that one more time with the paint program. If I use the paint program, and I open up a file in the paint program that's a picture, a photograph. I open up a file and it's a photograph and let's use the <coughs> Turtle Rock one here. And I open it, okay? Yeah, it's really big because there's a lot of pixels there. I'm gonna reduce this viewing area of it to get it down to smaller size, okay? I can play with this in paint and so forth. So, so if I want to now use the paint program to save this file, I go to file, save as, and I get all these file types. I get four different file types. I can save it as a JPEG. That's what it is now. It's a JPEG. But if I want to, I could save it as a PNG file type or a BMP file type or a GIF file type. They're all do with photos or clip art or something like that. So this tells me that the paint program can open up any of these file types as well. So if I have a, somebody sends me a GIF file type and I double click it and it may not, it may or may not open in photo viewer, I don't know. But I do know if I see a GIF file type, I can open it with the paint program. And then I can save it as a JPEG if I wish to. Okay. So going back to File Explorer, and I go to uh, Documents, it's not unusual to have the same file with the same name, but with a different file type at the end of it. Okay. Here's the same file, AAA test sample as a PDF file type. And here's the same file as a PUB file type. PUB is Microsoft Publisher. A PDF is just a bare bones, basic way to display a document or a photo. You can't edit it, you can't change it, you can't play with it, but you can see it. So that's why PDF is so popular. If somebody sends you a PDF file, you can open it, but you will probably not be able to edit the text in it because PDF is just for display purposes. But anyway, so that's what happened. I created a publisher file that I thought was very cool and very helpful. And somebody said, Jim, I saw or I heard about you have this great uh, uh, publisher file that I want to use to make mailing labels or, or something like that. Publisher does all kinds of printing possibilities. So I sent it to them. And then the phone rang. Jim, I can't open it. I said, well, I sent you my publisher file. Do you have Microsoft Publisher? Just, no, I don't have Microsoft Publisher. I go, well, then you can't open it, can you? And he says, well, what do we do? And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll save it using the Microsoft Publisher program or app. I will open this file again in my computer 
on my Microsoft publisher, and I will save it as a different file type. And I chose to save it as a PDF file type. And I attached that to the email and he got it. Now he couldn't do much with it other than print it, which is probably all he wanted to do in the first place. He couldn't get in there and change text in it or anything else because he doesn't have the Microsoft Publisher app that created it. Okay, so that's kind of the big picture with file types. A program, usually ABC program, if it allows you to create a file, it usually will create it as a certain particular file type, but it may have options for you to save that file as a different file type. On the other end of the line, you get a file that comes to you that's attached to an email. You can't open it. You have to think, what do I have on my computer that may be able to open this file type? And if you don't know, how do you find out? And the answer is you ask Google. So let's do a simple ask Google just to display and show what we ask for and what the results are. <coughs> I'm going to yeah, bring this up. This is important. Yeah. But this, what you're going to say is important to me. Okay, good. I'm glad. Well, everything else was helpful, though, right? I didn't waste your time. Oh, yeah. Okay, very, good. I'm learning a lot. Good. So I'm going to open up my. Uh, oh, hang on a second. Just down here. We'll make the window a little smaller so it can fit comfortably on what I can see in my monitor anyway. Okay, and I'm going to go to Google and here's the Google search page. Okay. So I can enter something in here like, uh, let's do something simple to start with. What apps and open a .jpg file. Oops, let's spell it correctly. Okay, and then I look at the list here. What app can open JPG files, plural? Which app opens JPG files? These sound like all similar to that. So I don't think I'll click on one of these I'll just hit the enter key on my keyboard. And here's the uh, first thing. Now, remember when you look at results on the internet, many of them are going to be ads, AD. And I'm right. so thankful they identify it as an ad. That means, hey, we want to help you, but maybe we can get money out of you. All right, right? that's an ad. And here's the list, here it is. Programs that can open JPG files. File viewer for Android, Google Photos, Google Chrome, A PowerSoft, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Adobe Photoshop. Notice it didn't list Windows Photo Viewer because it comes with Windows. It's free, you don't have to download it, you already got it but I'm surprised that it didn't list it here. It should have. And then we get down here. This is not an ad. I don't believe it's an ad. Let me go up here. No, this, none of this is an ad. And this is the date of the information, 2021, so it's recent. And here's a JPEG file extension. What is a JPEG file and how do I open it? What program will open it? Why can't I open it? blah, blah, blah. I'm going to click the link, the blue link, and let's see what we get. Now here it tells me all about, hey, JPG, Joint Photographic Experts Group. No wonder the JPG is JPG. What is it? More information, history. How do I open it? Microsoft Windows Photos. There it is. That's the default that comes with Windows. It can open it. Apple Preview, Adobe Photoshop can open it, and a GIMP cross-platform. That cross-platform means it works in Windows, it works in Apple, it works in other uh, operating systems. 
<clears throat> you can also view a JPG in your web browser by dragging and dropping it into your browser window. Well, I didn't know that. And here's File Viewer Plus, free download. Should you download it? Not without talking to somebody. It's probably harmless. It's probably safe. But I would ask somebody at the club, do you use File Viewer Plus? I do not. So I can't answer that question for you. Uh, but it's from Microsoft and it's free. So I would probably uh, not, not be too worried about it. Here's Microsoft Paint program that can open a JPEG. Okay, does that give you a good idea? Yes. Because you're gonna get a JPEG, you're gonna get a file extension that neither you nor I have heard of. And it would be most helpful to be able to look it up on Google and find out more about it. Now let's look up one more and- How about zip files? Yeah, let's look up zip files, there we go. See what garbage and useful things we see. I won't put the dot in front of it, I'll just call it a zip. You yeah. should be able to find it. What app can open a zip file? There we go, we'll click on that. Uh, so get started, this is an ad. Get started with WinZip, compress files faster, how to unzip a file. Can you click on these things safely? Probably, but I wouldn't download anything from an ad unless I was no. sure about it. Um, add, add, WinZip. WinZip supports numerous file types for their compression utilities, including Zip, ZipX, and all these other file types, most of which I've never heard of. And how to open a zip file on any device. Uh, this is not an ad, so I wouldn't hesitate if I wanted to click on that and learn about it. Here's an unzip tool, a zip extractor, zip extension, op open zip files now with WinZip. When you receive a downloaded zip file, you need a way to extract or unpack it so you can access these files. Let's click on this one. It has a high rating of all five. It, it is actually from the WinZip location on the internet address, WinZip. So I would not hesitate to at least click on it and see what it says. Need to open a zip file. Oops. All right. Oh, look, a nice ad popped up here. Let's get rid of that. It happens. Yeah. What is the zip file extension? How to open zip files? Since I don't do this, I will leave this to you yes. to work on it. But I did not know there were multiple different kinds of compression zip files. Evidently there are. There are. So, uh, but this probably would be safe to download that. How you use it, I don't know. If you run a zip file through this app and it comes unzipped, um, does it give it a new name? Do you have to rename it? Does it use the old name but change the extension from zip to something else? I don't know. So I think that's about as, I could do another example though. You did zip, right? And we can, you can look at that. Let me do another one just for fun. Let me use uh, Microsoft Publisher is P-U-G file type, P-U-G, uh, is that right? P-U-B, I'm sorry, not G, B, P-U-B. Yeah, P-U-B for publisher, get rid of that space. Okay, I'm going to hit the enter key. Okay, a .pub file is a Microsoft Publisher file format that it's easiest to open with Microsoft Publisher. If you don't have Publisher, you can use LibreOffice, CorelDRAW, or other programs that support the PUB format. And there is a way 
uh, to open Microsoft Publisher file to open it so you you can look at it, but you can't edit it. And it just opens it as a list, pages and pages of like a document. You can go through it and look at it, but you can't edit it because you don't have Microsoft Publisher. And here's four different ways to view. If they say view, that means look at, but not edit. You can view it, but you can't edit it because you don't, you don't have that, yeah list of programs that can open publisher files. Now this one mentioned up here, Libra Office Draw. Uh, for a while, the refurbishing group was refurbishing computers. And instead of putting Microsoft Office products on it, which could cost them some money, I guess, I don't know. They put a office, free office product on it called Libre, Office Libre or Libre Office. I think it's this one. It was from France and they just provided it free for anybody. And it can open Microsoft Office documents, publishers, whatever, it can open them and you can, and then you can add it, you can edit them. Like it could open a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, you could open that in LibreOffice and you can edit it. So that was pretty powerful. I don't use it because I do have the Microsoft products on my laptop and I don't want to use both. There's no need to use both. And also if I, wanted to use a free one, I wouldn't use LibreOffice anyway. I would use Google. Uh, Google is very powerful. It can open um, Google, Google Drive. Do you want me to do a minute on Google products real quick? Um, or are you familiar with Google? I'm very, very familiar. Okay. Google <laughs> Drive. Um, Google Drive right here. This is my Google Drive. But if I click new, I can do a new document, a new spreadsheet, a new slideshow, or a new form. And they're all free. And they Google Docs is just like Microsoft Word. Google Sheets is just like Microsoft Excel. And they can convert. You could create a Google Sheet that's a spreadsheet and you can save it as a Microsoft Excel. So there's no reason for me to use that Libre stuff. Google does everything I would ever need in that area. So if you like Google and I do, uh, you can use their tools for free. Okay, I think we're running out of time here. I wanted to open it up for you, Stanley, to ask any questions that you have while you got me here, and I'll be glad to help you in any way. Um, I think you've covered information that I was seeking. Good. good. Which is very good. Um, I'm glad. And uh, there are some things that I, I learned, and I have a picture of two pet dogs <clears throat> that um, I used to have and I'm going to have them converted to paint by numbers. So that's other uh, side information I learned. I'm, I'm going to try that. I am a, a I've done paintings using oil and I gave it up because mixology was not my forte. Ah. You know, if you mix a certain shade of gray today, and then you come back and you see the painting needs a little bit more of the same in another area, it's hell to, to mix up that same gray. Yes. But yeah. now I do pastel where you pick up the stick 
today or 20 years into the future, it's still going to have the same color. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you try it, please let me know and how much you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this yeah. was very informative, though. So okay. I thank you very much. You're very welcome. I have recorded this meeting for uh, Ann Ross, the president of the uh, uh, computer club, Stug. She asked for a recording of this meeting, so I'm going to be working on that. I've never recorded a meeting before, so I'm going to be interested to see um, if I can do that recording and, and make it available for other people. So yeah. if I do that, I'll let you know. Okay? That's nice. Yeah. But put it in a different format would screw up their mind. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I can choose formats for that, but I'll see. I would doubt you could. But anyway, good enough. Okay. Thank you for your time. Enjoy okay. the rest of your day and have a great weekend. Okay. And we'll we see you. Thank you very much. I'm stopping my sharing now and uh, I'll close out the meeting. Thank you, Stanley. Bye bye. <laughs>